Station, this is Minnesota Public Radio. How do you hear me? We have you loud and clear. Welcome aboard the International Space Station. Well, thank you much, Karen and Chris. Nice talking with you. Nice talking to you, too. How's the weather in Minnesota? <laughs> it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you for asking. Karen, I'm curious. One of the things you're doing is studying how living in space affects humans. Describe how living in the space station for more than two months now has affected you physically. Well, if we didn't work out as much as we do, I think we would see a lot more changes. Um, I think uh, our, our bone density and our muscle mass is one of the main things we're worried about. But we exercise about two hours every single day. So uh, we're really mitigating that. Uh, other than that, you notice things like um, the calluses on your feet kind of start to go away because you don't need, you don't need, uh, you know, you're not walking around every day to form those calluses. And so things like that you notice. You know, I would think that two hours a day sounds exhausting, but with the weightlessness, it must be a different situation. Do you have to modify your equipment and your exercise? What we do for exercise, we have what's called a, an ad, um, resistive exercise device, which is kind of like lifting weights, and it actually uses the pull of a vacuum and cylinders. And we also have a treadmill that we bungee ourselves to to stay on the, on the floor as we run. And we also have a, a bicycle that we can use, and that we use those two for our cardiovascular health. There's the uh, physiological effects of being in space, but physically it's very tight quarters up there. It's got to be like having six people in a small tent on a camping trip. How is the interpersonal side of the equation for you? It's really good. Actually, it's not that. <laughs> it, isn't, it, it really isn't that crowded. The International Space Station is quite large. We have a number of modules. We have uh, the Russian segment and the United States segment, and we have, you know, 10 modules or so on the U.S. segment that are quite large, the size of a school bus or bigger. So it's very easy. We each have our own sleeping quarters. Um, you know, if you feel like you do need to get away from each other. And when we're working throughout the day, sometimes we're working in the same module, sometimes we're separated. So really, the privacy is good, and interpersonally, I think this, this is a great place to be. Now, you're doing a lot of studying, as I mentioned, about the space effects on humans. You're also investigating what caused water to leak into the helmet worn by your crewmate, uh, Luca Parmitano, during that spacewalk on July the 16th. Have you figured out anything yet? Well, uh, hopefully you'll let somebody from Maine to speak to you in Minnesota. I'm uh, glad to I'm glad to answer this question because I, I had the uh, fortune or misfortune to be out there with Luca. And um, right now, the engineers have have put together a really detailed troubleshooting plan that we're about halfway through executing. And I think the best way to answer it is we know what the problem wasn't. There were about five or six items that it could have been, and we've eliminated most of them. And we're down to the to uh, two or three really prime suspects, and we'll, we'll uh, with one or two more tests, we'll have a, uh, exactly identified the problem and make sure that we can, if we can, we'll fix it in space, but we might have to bring that suit back to Earth and fix it there. And uh, But most importantly, making sure that all the rest of the space suits in our inventory are safe for, for subsequent spacewalks. I know you all are getting ready for the arrival of a Japanese cargo ship. What's your responsibility when that ship arrives? The HTV, which is coming up next week, actually, uh, it is grappled by the, the Canadian robotic arm. And so Chris and I will actually be working together at the robotic workstation to use that arm to, to grapple the... Uh, the vehicle as it comes in, it's going to it uh, rendezvous automatically under its own systems, and it, when it gets to a certain distance away, we'll be in the cupola and we'll be um, able to uh, monitor the approach as it gets closer to space station, and then reach out and grab it. And then uh, the controllers on the ground will actually use the robotic arm to install it to one of the um, hatches, the hatchways on the space station, and then we'll be able to go in and get all the goodies that are arriving. You know, you're doing a lot of work, uh, Karen and Chris, and, of course, the other crew members, too. What do you all do to unwind? It's funny. There, it, the week goes by, and you, you really realize there's not a lot of free time, especially on the weekdays. And by the time we finish our work day, 
and uh, get done with our daily planning conference that we do with all the space centers around the world. We, uh, you know, then it's time for dinner and phone calls to family and that type of thing, and then the day is done. On the weekends, we have about half a day on Saturday where we have free time and then most of Sunday. And we all like to go and take pictures out of the window. We read. We just sit and chat with each other. Um, I brought some uh, projects to work on. I'm trying to do a little bit of sewing. Uh, I haven't done as much as I would like, but like I said, the free time, just the time just goes so fast here. Well, Karen, your pictures are gorgeous on Twitter, by the way. Thank you. I'm, I'm trying to show everybody who isn't as privileged as we are to be able to come here what it looks like from this vantage point. Like I said, we're so privileged to be able to come and, and see the earth and the, how beautiful it looks from here. And, and since so few people get to do that, I think sharing, and I try to get my pictures to look in a way so it looks like it does when we look. And the, the color's as vibrant as it, as it is when we look out the window. And um, just try and share what we're seeing. So Karen, have you finally gotten a chance to take a picture of your hometown of Vining, Minnesota from space? I did a couple weeks ago, thanks to Chris. He knew I had been waiting to um, to get a picture of it, and every single time we passed over, it was very cloudy. And then one time I was working on, on a project, and he called over Intercom and said, Karen, it's clear in Minnesota. And so I went down to the cupola and, and got some pictures, and I think everybody in my hometown area really enjoyed it. Say, final question, do you both think you'll be ready to come home after about six months in space? I think six months is a, is a good amount of time. I think it's enough time. You kind of want to go home before you're, you're craving going home, I think. Um, but, of course, with our families at home, everybody, you know, I, I, I'm going to be looking forward to going home. I hate leaving this place, um, but, but I know I'll be looking forward to go home, going home in November. Karen and Chris, thanks. Thanks for joining us.